Well, first of all, the general themes that compose our objective, meaning the sciences, spirituality, and its many forms of expression and health, as well as their relations, emerge within a specific historical context and were grounded on philosophical premises. This means that to fully understand them, besides quantitative and qualitative approaches, we must also include a theoretical speculative perspective to our study. Besides, these themes are not only extremely important to understand the development of society and culture in time, but also because they represent a very rich field to philosophical analysis. Regarding our research group, NUPIS, one of our main characteristics is interdisciplinarity. That's why we have researchers from various fields of investigation, such as the health sciences, the mathematics, and of course the humanities. Once we realize the complexity of our mission, in other words, to develop research of excellence on the relations between spirituality and health, we understood that we could never reach this goal through a single perspective. Obviously, we belong to the wide fields of knowledge of history and philosophy. However, our research is also subordinate to a more specific debate that involves two relatively recent disciplines of study and research. Those are the history and philosophy of science and science and religion. In the first one, we philosophically discuss scientific theories and concepts understood within historical frameworks. In science and religion, we try to understand the relations between them, meaning in what manner spirituality has had an impact, if any, on the sciences, and also how scientific communities have behaved when facing the spiritual dimension of mankind. But it is very important to point out that with our research, we try to contribute to these disciplines just as much as we benefit from their studies. Well, methodologically speaking, our research initiates with a question, which we call a research problem. Just as an example, was spirituality scientifically investigated in the past, and in what manner? Then, our next step is to formulate a hypothesis that we believe might resolve our research problem. In other words, that it might answer our question in a satisfactory way. Next step is the definition of the terms involved in our question, such as science, scientific method, religion, spirituality, and spiritual experience. Now we have a conceptual net that will help us to locate those objects in their various versions in the past and analyze the conditions that allowed or contributed to their emergence, as well as their relations with the present, either of continuity or of discontinuity. Within this process, we collect evidence, which in our case is bibliographical and documental, and that's why we're inside our lab, a library. And then, after that, we move to the final step, the justification of our answer. This means that the solution to our research problem will be grounded not only on evidence and on the way we interpret them, but also supported by arguments logically articulated. Yes, of course, let's take as an example what we call nowadays spiritual experiences. But before we move on to that def definition, we must first understand the difference between religiosity and spirituality, terms that until recently were considered as synonymous. Religiosity has to do with an organized system of beliefs, practices, and symbols developed to facilitate closeness to the sacred or transcendent. Spirituality, on the other hand, is the personal quest for understanding answers to ultimate existential questions, such as sickness and death. This means that in order to live a spiritual experience, religious rituals or religious communities are not necessary, because this type of experience is of an emotional nature, meaning that they transcend the five senses, the intellect or reason. They might be experienced through practices such as prayer and meditation, and they normally involve altered states of mind, some may call trance. 
Some of them are described as an experience of union or fusion with God, a divine energy, a higher power, an ultimate reality, or as an experience of contact with immaterial beings described as angels or demons, or simply spirits. So we may say that spiritual experiences encompass a wide spectrum of phenomena which vary from experiences of union and connection with a cosmic whole, with humanity or nature, to dramatic experiences such as near-death experiences or the contact with spiritual beings.